Hey guys, welcome back to the Unity course. Today we're going to be looking at UI. We're going to start playing with UI a little bit, just have a little bit more control over our game, get more feedback and also maybe create some kind of menu scene as well. So I'm going to go over this um, fairly quickly. The reason is I have a lot of tutorial on UI on the channel. You can of course look it up using the search bar on the, um, on the channel page. But it's not something that is too complicated. It just really takes a lot of practice. Just remembering all the steps you need to take to actually make say a button work or how to uh, make communication in between two scripts. So uh, we're going to start by doing something quite simple. We're going to go instead of the R key right here on the right hand side, right click in here and create a new UI. Now whatever you choose in there, um, if you don't have a canvas already, it's going to create you one. Now I'll, get, I'll touch more uh, the canvas in a second, but let's do, let's start by creating a, um, a score text. So basically I'd like to have a text that is just reminding me how big my snake is basically. So I invite you to look at your hierarchy. Here's what happened. When we create a text object, it did of course create our text just like we asked, but it have also created a canvas and also an event system. Now um, these two things are required to make a good UI work. If you were not using any kind of events, if we were not having any kind of buttons, um, mouse over action, or any really no interaction with the UI. If you just wanted it to display information and you never really interact with your UI, then in that case, you would not have to use the event system. This is something you don't need if you're not gonna be interacting with your UI. In our case, we might have a button that redirects us back to the main menu scene or something like that. So I leave it in here. And also if you, if like one day you're making some kind of game, adding the UI, just creating some buttons and your button, they don't work. Just make sure you have an event system. That might be the biggest cause of your problem, basically. So um, the canvas, now let's talk about the canvas a little bit. The canvas is an object that is required for you to display UI. Let's have a look here. If I was to actually just put my text right here in the middle of the canvas, you can see it at this moment. The reason you can see it, it is because it has a component called canvas renderer. Now for this canvas renderer to work, it actually needs the canvas itself. Canvas is a component on top of its parent, so right here, here it is, so this component right here. And if um, the canvas renderer doesn't have access to that, it just doesn't work. And the way it has access to it is because um, his parent is the one that should be holding canvas. Now if I take this text and I just bring it outside of the canvas, it is no longer being displayed. It still exists, it's still a game object, still has a text component on it, still has a canvas renderer, however, the canvas renderer just doesn't know where the canvas is. So you gotta make sure that this is always a children. All the UI objects you have, they're always gonna be children of the canvas. And that is really important because the canvas drives a lot of uh, settings in there. So it's, it's gonna drive the scale of your object, like you have a canvas scaler here. It's gonna drive a lot of stuff such as rendering order and also which display you're putting that UI on. So um, if we are just trying to make a standalone game like we are right now with the snake game, I would recommend that you go over here on the canvas sc uh, scaler and you tell them to scale with the screen size. This way, if you just stretch your screen, it's always gonna be the same thing no matter what. In our case, we're gonna be using a 16 per nine resolution, which is what we should also be using when we're making our game. So to actually choose on which resolution you're trying to make, that is always going to be depending on where are you building this to? So are you building this for iPad? Are you building this for standalone PC games? In my case right here, we are building this for standalone PC. So I'm gonna be using a resolution that is quite common that most people have, it is a 16 per nine. So if I go under a game here, I can choose 16 per nine and it's gonna just rescale the thing for an actual screen. Now, if you were building this for iPad, for mobile phone, for tablets, you could be using, say for an iPad, you could be using a resolution that is uh, if you just change the aspect ratio for four by three, that is the scale of an iPad. So you would actually make sure your UI fits with that screen, make sure everything is really centered around that kind of resolution. In our case, like I said, I'm gonna be using 16 per nine and you modify it inside of the game scene. So not a game scene, sorry, the game actual window. So as you can tell here, I'm swapping in between my game and scene view and I have to be in game view to actually change the resolution. Now. Um, something you're going to notice when you change the resolution is that your canvas is actually going to follow. Your canvas is made for that specific resolution you're building into. You're, you're making your game around that resolution. Your canvas fits that. If I was to go here and just say, 
um, have a resolution that is say I don't a hundred by fifty for some reason your canvas would actually follow that resolution obviously this is not a good idea at all but as you can tell the canvas does follow that thing so what drives your canvas is the resolution you have in your game scene or game window sorry so here it is I have my game window in 16 per 9 making the game for 16 per 9 and now I can assume that everything I see in that canvas and now just to make everything clear here's my game scene what we've made thus far it is just a tiny tiny bit compared to the actual canvas but when we hit play they all fit in a good way so um, don't worry if your canvas is like that big it's using pixel screen resolution it's not it's not actually using the world coordinate unless you wanted to have some 3d UI floating around then that would be another story but we're not to that point just yet. Um, so just tell yourself that it is normal that your canvas is that big. Don't go and resize stuff. It just just leave it like that. That is how it's supposed to be. So, okay, we have our canvas. That's cool. We have um, scale with screen size. We're gonna tell them say 1920 by 1080, which is a a 16 per nine resolution. And I'm just gonna close this off. Well, not really close this off. I'm going to leave canvas so I can actually see the borders. Now what we really want at this point is to position our text somewhere and of course make it bigger because right now we can barely see what's going on. The first thing I tend to do when I create some kind of UI piece is first of course rename it so in this case it's going to be my score and then you play with the anchor so where exactly do you want your text to be anchored? Uh, where do you want your UI piece to be anchored? Top left, uh, maybe top right, bottom left, bottom right. You do that by clicking on this big icon here. And then you have a lot of option, the uh, the anchor preset. So what I'm going to do here is I like to have my text always in the top, in the top side of my screen. So always in the middle and also in the top. So I'll be clicking here, and I also shift clicking. So I set the pivot point as well. And as you can tell, I have my text selected right here. But the pivot point is actually at the very top. So if I just reset everything, put everything on zero, and just give it like a normal width of say. 300 by 100 then as you can tell it is really just set here it's really just uh, matching the anchor so that could be something I like and then um, no matter what your screen resolution is it's always going to be in the top center like that and then you can you can actually give it a padding so say I like it to be minus 50 so I have like a little offset at the top so that could be something that works as well maybe increase the width here you have some alignment just like in any good text editor and you can say just preview your text say score um, 15 so your score is currently 15 or snake length 15 now of course uh, that text is going to be modified every time you have a new point but the thing is we just like to have something to test this out to see how it's going to turn out in the game so if we just hit play right now are we satisfied with that I mean, I mean, we could be satisfied with that. Um, I think it looks a little bit bland. It doesn't really stand out too much. So what I'm going to do is on top of my text, I'll also add a component called outline. This way I can actually see a little bit better what's going on. Maybe increase the size to say 75. And I tend to enjoy that a little bit more. Now, of course, you can change the outline to whatever color you'd like. In our case, maybe red because the apple is red. Who knows? You just have fun with that. There is a lot of things you can change. You can change the effect color. You can change the actual text color, um, the font. So if you were to import the font in your project folder, you would have access to your font right here by clicking on the little dot sign. You can also put that in Ialic, bold, and just typical text editing, right? So that is really all you need for a normal text component. Now I'm satisfied with this and let's just have a test how exactly it reacts in a game. As you can tell, it's kind of fighting because we're resizing, but uh, when you drop the resize, it always scale with the screen size, which is exactly what we wanted. And it turns out that text is always at the same exact place. And that is definitely what we wanted in this case. Now this would be a full 16 per 9 resolution. It would look like that. So maybe we want to actually move this down to say here. And it's going to turn, turn out to be uh, minus 75. And I'll just make sure I modify it while the game is not running so it's being reflected as you can tell my UI is now here 
Now this next thing we need to do at this point is to connect our code, our actual code. So whenever we eat an apple, we get a score increment, right? So we change our score. We need to connect that to our text component. As you can tell, this is just a single component, just like all the other components we have. Um, we modify it manually here, so there has to be a way to modify it through the code, right? And this is super simple. What we're going to be doing is go in our code at the very top. Let's declare a new field. This one has to be public as well, just like our Apple prefab. It has to be public because we're going to be using uh, a drag and drop to reference to that text. Now, the name of the component we want is actually text itself. So let's try that out. Let's do public text. And for some reason, it doesn't come out. So um, this is something that um, is new, not really new, but uh, Unity has implemented his new type of UI, his new UI uh, recently in, I think it was the version 4.6. And it's not really part of Unity Engine, it's part of Unity Engine.UI. So you need to use another statement here when um, you actually uh, want to use some UI. So here it is. It's called Unity Engine.UI. And this is going to allow you to have the text component. Now I know this is my this might be a little bit hard to find out at first, but um, a quick Google search is going to tell you exactly what you need to know at this point. So public text, text is going to be the type, so this guy here, and then we need to name this. So in this case, let's name it score text. If we go back here on our uh, on our snake, we have the snake script, and then on the snake script there is a score text right here. We want to drag and drop our score in that field. This way, it actually points toward this text component. So to recap really quickly, on our snake, we have a field called score text, and score text points toward this text component, this one. So we can technically modify the field inside of the text component uh, called text again. So that's kind of weird. There's like two texts. Uh, text is the type, but there's also a field inside of it called text. We can modify it and actually change the text. So let's give it a try. Um, we have a score text right here. At the beginning, our score is actually equal to, I believe it is equal to five. So let's do that right here at the beginning. So score text dot text again, that would be the string. And then we need to feed it a string. So right, our string is score two dots and then we add a number next to it. The number is gonna be snake score to string. And we can copy this line and just put it also the place where we gain points. So when we do snake score plus plus, which is right here when we eat an apple, let's also do score text is equal to score, snake score to string, which is going to end up with something like that. So as you can tell right now, it says score 15. When we start the game, it's on five. So we start with five, right? That's the initial score. When we eat an apple, we go up to six, then seven, eight and it just keeps going on like that so we can now keep track of our score through a piece of ui which is going to be way more easier than just um you know counting down the snakes and that is pretty much it guys that's pretty much all we have to cover today it's um we've done a little bit of ui we're going to be doing more when we create our menu scene in the next episode we're also going to be creating a button so adding um adding some function calls to buttons that's going to be quite cool so guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope that you learned something. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did learn something, just go ahead and leave me a like. It helps out quite a lot uh, more than you might think it does, but um, it helps quite a lot. So please just leave a like, check out the Facebook page, check out the Patreon page, all that kind of stuff that just keeps me going. And I will see you guys quite soon with the next one. Cheers.